Hello folks, I would like to welcome you back to our Red Arrow project after something of an absence. Uh, for those of you that haven't been following along, the Red Arrow is the name that I've given to our 1996 BMW E36 uh, that we're attempting to convert into an electric vehicle for 1000 euros or less. So what are we going to be talking about today? is going to be mostly the charging system. Now, part of what I've been trying to do has been to get the vehicle to a point that I can actually drive it. Because I have to do things like getting it tested, uh, getting the wheel alignment done and things like that. So when you last saw us, we were pretty much just doing little uh, test drives um, fairly short distance though. So in order to make that happen I have temporarily fitted a Brusa NLG 513 charger that I had here in the workshop. Now point of that is just let me get the batteries charged and balanced so that I can drive the vehicle to the wheel alignment place, drive it to the testing center and things like that. That is not going to be the solution that we are going to employ for charging the vehicle's traction battery. I just want to make that very, very clear. This is a temporary fix uh, to let me get the vehicle mobile. Now, so the question then is, what are we going to be doing for a charging system? Initially, when I set out in my own mind what I was going to you know, when I was kind of setting out the build in my own mind, I was pretty much sure that I was going to be looking at using the capacitive uh, charging system uh, that I had used uh, and still do use in the E39. Now, that was very, you know, simplistic and... Uh, you know, has been very rugged and rel reliable. Uh, it's been in the car now four and a half years, charging it, you know, sometimes twice, three times a day. Uh, and has never really missed a beat. And it's cheap, so, you know, it kind of uh, ticks the boxes on the surface of it. That being said, it is crude and it is very inefficient. And I know you guys sometimes freak out about harmonic disturbance on the mains and all that kind of stuff as if I somehow you know don't actually comprehend that kind of, of thing well I do uh, but sometimes the needs of the wallet outweigh the needs of the harmonic balance of the electricity grid so I have always wanted to revisit um, a charging system that I had built for the original E36 compact build uh, that had been around the design published on the DIY electric car forum um, must be wow quite a number of years ago now by a British gentleman named Simon Rafferty and I built I think two or three of those char chargers but the problem always was the controlling of it and additionally the inductor uh, because making an inductor that could take the high currents necessary and, and keeping it cool uh, while doing so uh, was a very uh, very serious challenge so I'm pleased to say I think we have a neat solution coming up uh, that is going to give us the ability to build a quite efficient uh, single and three phase input 20 kilowatt output DC charger. Yes, you heard that right, 20 kilowatts. So I'm not going to, I'm going to keep you guys in a little bit of suspense on this video, um, but we will be doing a video very soon 
uh, where I'll be covering what I'm going to do and we'll be doing some bench tests. Um, I have here just got my feet on them, uh, a pair of uh, Gen 2 Toyota Prius batteries that we'll be using as kind of bench packs for playing with. Uh, so right, you've heard me nattering on for long enough. Why don't we go have a look at the car and I'll show you guys what we've got going on and uh, how much, you know, what we've kind of done so far. Alright, so right now uh, there's a wasp after landing on one of the battery cables. Hello wasp. Um, you will probably hear our Brusa charger fanning itself away in there. I've mounted it in here. Again, this is just a purely temporary system uh, just to get the vehicle mobile for me. Uh, I've mounted it in here underneath the front uh, battery tray. So that's putting in about 12 amps into our traction battery at the minute. Uh, the mains comes in here to the uh, junction box. We have three phase neutral and earth coming in. Um, single phase uh, neutral and earth goes out here to the Brusa charger. And you will also see in here with a big welding clamp holding it is a uh, 14 volt 10 amp um, battery charger for the 12 volt system. Now you might say why have I got a big welding clamp um, holding this thing in here. Well this is a charger that I've bought recently. It can be a real challenge trying to find a reasonably powerful uh, charger that is suitable for lithium iron phosphate 12 volt or 4S uh, packs which is what we use to run the 12 volt systems in our vehicle here. I got this one um, from this GWL power company in the Czech Republic. Um, it's you know it's not fantastic but it's kind of about the only choice that I could get reasonably quickly without going to a Chinese distributor or something like that. Now there's absolutely no mounting mechanism whatsoever supplied with this charger. So what I've done here is I've used some panel adhesive to basically attach it inside our uh, junction box here and I've just got it temporarily clamped in with the welding vice grips until that adhesive goes off which it is actually doing at the minute. Um, it is charging our 12 volt uh, battery. There's a little fan in it. Don't know if I'm going to be able to hear it or see it, but so this is going to be in here charging our 12 volt system. We've got the Brusa temporarily rigged up here. Our new charging system will be going in there. Um, so then we come back here to our fuel filler. So what you're going to see in here. Um, is a standard 32 amp uh, 5 pin 3 phase uh, appliance inlet. Uh, let me just, I should just pull that out and you guys will be able to see it. That's a standard off the shelf part. Um, costs about 8 to 10 euros and uh, that's, I don't know if you're going to be able to see too well, but it's kind of just goes in there, has a cable gland on the back. And this is what we're using for our charging port. Now, you might say to me, why didn't I put in a nice type two socket or something like that? Well, the reason there, guys, is cost. For a type two socket, uh, 32 amp, five pin, or sorry, seven pin, you would be looking at well over 100 euros. Then you need a charging cable, which can be another 150. So I decided to take a slightly different approach with this thing. So with our appliance inlet, I have a 32 amp uh, five pin trailing socket here. Let me just shove that back in there. 
Um, then we come along with just a five uh, core cable to a product here uh, that I was sent many months ago, um, which is this guy. And what we've got here is a 3D printed uh, type two connector head. Um, it's been designed so that it fits into one of these three phase red um, kind of plug covers. And it's got a button here. So inside here is a couple of resistors and a diode and so and so forth. So when I click off the button, you probably hear the contactor go off in the charging point there. We've got a blue LED on here. If I click the button back on, there's our power green power light back on. So what this gives us is the ability to uh, use our vehicle with a very cheap cable and a very cheap inlet uh, with public charging infrastru infrastructure and indeed um, our own home charging point here uh, that we use with the vehicles. Now in the back here is a real bit of a mess of stuff but I want to show you guys a little bit more detail uh, on this particular product. Let me hop into the car here. Now this is another one uh, that the company sent me so you'll be able to see a little bit of a more of a close-up on it. This is a really tough um, 3D printed uh, plug head here. You'll see they've put some steel reinforcing pins in here and you'll see the same kind of a thing again. The handle is made out of one of these uh, just the back of a you know a, a a 16 amp I think three phase plug they've got a little uh, push on push off switch there for uh, turning the uh, pilot signal um, to I think it's called state B or state C so you put your own cable in there there's uh, solder pins on the back you need a good 100 watt soldering iron to um, to be able to do that now I'm really embarrassed because the guy sent me those plugs months ago must be uh, when I was just starting this particular project and I hunted around in my email I tried every kind of combination of a search but I couldn't find um, the name of the company or the guy's name that sent them to me or anything so <laughs> this is probably the world's worst product review so if you know um, if you are the person that sent those to me please get in touch or or if you know uh, the people that make those also please let me know in the comments um, and I'll make an update video uh, because I really want to give this a proper review on the bench and I will kind of make this one up with a cable for you guys and kind of um, do a much more detailed review of it. Um, again, it's been literally just expediency that I needed to get that cable made up, needed to get the car charging. So that's the charging side of things uh, that we have going on here at the minute. Now, over here, uh, you will see that we still have our um, glove compartment removed. You can see we got these two big 10 square black and red cables sitting here. So let's go around to the passenger side and uh, show you guys what we've got going on here. Alright, so we have uh, removed the 
heater matrix. I hope you're going to be able to see this now. Sorry if the lighting is really bad. It's another trademark of my fantastic videos. And we have the E87 uh, PTC heater installed in there. And I've basically sealed the gaps around it with uh, PU adhesive. Uh, just has been the simplest way to get this thing uh, installed in here. So we're going to be rigging up uh, the high current wiring. Remember this is a 12 volt heater. Uh, so I've got some terminal block and stuff I'll be kind of putting on there just to make the make the high current connections. Um, and we'll be getting this guy up and running uh, really soon. So do stay tuned for that fun packed episode. Well alrighty folks. Uh, that is about what I've got for you on the Red Arrow at the minute. As I say, do stay tuned in for the Charger episode because I'm hoping now to do that in the next week or two. At least have a proof of concept on the bench working for you guys. So, as usual, hope you've enjo enjoyed. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Uh, check the links in the description for PayPal and Patreon in case you wish to financially support any of these crazy projects. Also in the, in the description uh, there will be a link to my GitHub page where you can download schematics and software and all kinds of things for my various projects. So, until then, um, happy Charger development.